Hello and welcome to this screencast in which we are going to talk about how to calculate the return on a single asset. So let me highlight it here for you, return of a single asset. And then we are going to divide this discussion into two parts. Number one, we are going to see how to calculate the actual return. And number two, we are going to see how to find out the expected return. Now for calculating actual return, we assume some data. We say that you bought a share last year and it had cost you $48 at that time. And now today when you're ready to sell this share, it is selling in the market for $50 per share. And during the time that you held these shares with you, they also gave you a dividend of $1 per share. So the first question that we need to ask is how much money did you make on your investment? And the answer would be simple you made $50 because that is the price you sold your share for and you had bought it for $48 so you take the difference between these two numbers and then during the year you had gotten a dividend of $1 so you add that dividend amount here and so that is going to give you $3 of dollar return we call this amount $3 as your dollar return but then you also might come across a question where you might have to find out the percentage return and to find out the percentage return is also pretty simple. Percentage return is simply equal to the amount of money you make, this one here, divided by the amount of money you invested. So let us do that quickly here. We are going to denote the actual return by the letter K and let us see. The numerator is the amount of money we make. This is that amount of $3. So let's write it here quickly. 50 minus 48 plus 1 and this thing needs to be divided by the amount of money you invested remember you bought the share for $48 this one here so we just write 48 and your answer is 6.25 percent so on this particular investment you made 6.25 percent return if you want to write this formula here this calculation in notational terms so that it can serve you as a formula later you can simply write it like this. This $50 here is the price of the share at time period t. This $48 here is the price of the same share at time period t minus 1, that is last year. This $1 is the cash flow that you have received as dividends this year. And you have divided this, uh, divided, the, divided this whole thing by the price of the share in time period t minus 1. Now let us move over to how to find out the expected return. When we calculate expected return, my friends, the first thing you need to remember is that expectation always brings in an amount of uh, probability into the picture. And when that happens, we can come across two possibilities again. Possibility one is that the probabilities of various events are known and equal. And the second possibility is that the probabilities of events are unequal. So let us look at the first possibility where the probabilities are equal. We are saying here, for example, that there are two possibilities. Two events can happen. Either we can have a good economic condition in the coming future or we can have a poor economic condition in the near future. And the chance, the probability of both these events happening is equal, 50% each. Now, if the uh, economic conditions remain good, your investment in a particular share, for example, is going to return you 10% and if things go bad then the same investment may give you just a 2% rate of return. Now when this happens that is when the probabilities of events are equal then finding out the expected return is absolutely simple that is you simply take the arithmetic average of the returns given to you. So the return under the good scenario is 10% and the return under the poor scenario is 2%. You simply take an arithmetic average of these two numbers. That is 10 plus 2. And you divide this by 2 because you are taking an average. And so your answer is 6%. Now, in the second case, when the probabilities are not equal, let us assume the same data, but let us change the probabilities. This time, let us say that there's a 30% probability of a good economic condition prevailing and there's a 70% chance that the probability will be, uh, there's, there's a 70% chance that the economic conditions will not be so good. And we assume the same amount, uh, same level of return, 10% during good times and 2% during bad times. Now, in this case, calculating your return 
cannot be a matter of calculating the simple arithmetic average. We need to take into account individual probabilities. So let us do that quickly here. What you do is you write down the first probability 30 percent. So we write it down here as 0 0.30 and you multiply the amount the level of return associated with this probability. The, look look at this row now 30 percent chance that the return is going to be 10 percent. So inside the bracket here we write 10. Then we put a plus sign and we look into the second um, possibility which is that there might be there's a 70 percent chance that the economic condition might not be so good. So let us write down this probability here 0 0.70 and let us multiply this probability by the return that is associated with it that is 2 percent. So this here is going to give you if you solve it it's going to give you 4.4 percent and if you want to write the same result in notational terms then you will observe that this 0 0.30 is P1 probability 1 this 10 percent is R1 this 0 0.70 is probability 2 and this 2 is the return of the second possibility. Now like this this series can go on till n number of terms so that your last term will be Pn times Rn and if you want to summarize it by a summation mark you simply write um, summation of all outcomes varying from i to n Pi times Ri. So that was pretty simple then calculation of actual and expected return of a single asset. Bye-bye my friends.